because it might result in her go. It, 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 this is one of those things where it's kind of tonal. Well, what are you still doing here? Kind of thing is oh, why are you with us? So I'm gonna quick save and then ask her. What do you wish of me? Uh, so we are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Why are you here? I am here because Flemeth commanded me to aid you. Why? Do you wish me to leave? I can do so if you prefer. No, I don't want you to leave. Then I assume our discussion ends here. Whoa! I'm, I'm reloading, because... Should I reload? No, it's just like, okay, yeah, it's, hmm. I'm going to be cheeky. I'm also, I'm going to ask her about the other one as well. What do you wish of me? Da, 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 da. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. What if I asked her what she wanted? I am here because Flemeth commanded me to aid you. Why? Do you wish me to leave? I can do so if you prefer. Do you want to leave? If I wanted to leave, then I would go. I remain, so do not ask such pointless questions. Okay, so it's my thing. I think it might be a... Well, why are you still here? Kind of issue. So, where it's kind of tonal. Where the tone I'm going through is... Why are you, he why, why are you with us? Kind of trying to get to know her. Maybe she just doesn't like that. I don't know. I Reload. I'm actually... Right. I'm walking away from her so she can't hear what's the, hear me talking about her. Um, I don't know what I'm on about. Um, Alright, so there's, there's two ways you can read that. Why are you here being slightly more kind of pushing her, which is probably a bit unfair, and try and get to know her, which is probably better to ask a different question anyway. Or, why are you here? I don't want to ask her, why are you here? I want to ask her, why are you here? Why are you here is kind of more like, what are you doing? Why are you in the party? So I'll ask another what question. What do you wish of me? Let's, I'll just ask you something. If you must. Um, did you really grow up in the Kakari Wilds? Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? <laughs> you can probe me any time. No, it's my favourite way of annoying you. I'm, cur I'm curious, what's wrong with that? Any number of cats could inform you of the answer to that question, but have it your way. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. Hmm, I have a hard time picturing that. I think... Gehira should probably be able to imagine it. Uh, it's kind of the y the younger son of a noble family. He's he's pff, he's not going to inherit. Doesn't matter. So he he would have been a daydreamer in some ways, and and would have probably would have pictured running away to some wild part of his lands. And you remained unnoticed. For the most part, Flemeth taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. Very daring. That does sound like you. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be travelling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language, most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. So she tried you a good liar. Oh, that was quick thinking. Yeah, what happened to the poor man? He was arrested, she said that. That was quick thinking. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. 
One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? Touching for a greeting? I, I don't understand this. I, I'm... I, I'm British. Like, like, a handshake? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things. I, I don't know them either. I still do not understand it all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. And yet here you are. <laughs> hey, yet here you are. Yet here you are. Yes, here I am. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Morgan approves, yay! This was the only conversation we had with her. What? <laughs> I... <sighs> Already talked about it, don't need to talk about it more. Sten! Yes. Um, what were you doing in the cage? Sitting, as you observed. You were standing? Um, uh, you were actually standing, but whatever. That's not what I meant. It's what you asked. Are you going to answer my question? I did. Bashera, was there anything else? I'm actually going to have a proper conversation with this. This is the challenge. I wanted to discuss something you mentioned. Speak then. No, I don't. Then I suggest we move on. Well, the Mass Effect conversations. I have a question. No, we'll call it there. As you wish. You're impossible. I mean, out of everything I could talk about, a Mass Effect conversation. That's that's so mean calling them Mass Effect conversations, but. Based on my playthrough system. Hello, do you want to talk about something? Yes, what do you want to talk about? Nothing, goodbye. That's the kind of conversation I have with you, Sten. Liliana can cheer me up. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. Here you are. Um... What would someone like you be doing Lothering's Chantry? Uh, what was life like in the cloister? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious focus, though. Some of them? That's why I'm not particularly fond of them. A condescending how so? When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Oh, they're Pharisees. Okay. I don't really want the Maker looking in on me. Anyway, what did... What did you say to them? I prefer your ideas to the ideas of the Chantry. It's true, let's say that. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy. Not men. Not the Chantry. But there is work to be done. And I have talked enough for now. Yay, Liliana approves. I think... Based on this... I think maybe Gahiris is a kind of a bit naive when it comes to some things. Like that. And he, he's not sure what he's... Now that he's on his own and is seemingly... Ostensibly the leader of a random band of... We've got a Witch of the Wilds. We've got a, a former lay sister of the Chantry. We have a Kunari who won't talk to us, we've got a 
golem that's glowing green. We have a dog and a templar. I mean... What, what, a, what, a, what a merry band of idiots we make. You're led by me, the biggest idiot of them all. Right. Alistair. What do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away. I'll even raise you. How did you become a great warden? What can a Templar do? Hmm. Hmm. I think we'll work through it. You said that Arl Eamon raised you. Did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. <laughs> Explains how you eat. Um. Really must have been tough for them. Um. Yeah, I think we're going to be a bit jokey about it. That must have been tough for them. Well, they were flying dogs, you see. Surprisingly strict parents, too, and devout Andrastians to boot. That's what they say about Anders. Oh, and these dogs hold the Chantry. No, no, I'm not going to say that. I don't get it. Like, like he, I'm, he's playing along with what I, with the comment I made. So, I, 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 who's Anders? What's Anders? That's what they say about Anders. I'll say it. That and that they make a great deal of cheese. Funny, but the dogs never mention cheese. As a matter of fact, if you said cheese around them, they'd start growling. Isn't that odd? Hey. Or did I dream all of that? <laughs> Funny the dreams you'll have when you sleep on a cold, hard ground, isn't it? I'm going to hit you very soon. Now. I, I dream of becoming a great warden. Oh, wait. Is this going somewhere? I don't know. Is it? I'm. Hmm. Because I don't think I'd say three. I dream of becoming a great warden. Dot dot dot. Oh wait. I think. I think I did talk about becoming a great warden at the very beginning. Be like, oh, it'd be cool if I did. So I think maybe I will say that. I dream, I, I dream, dreamt of becoming a grey warden. Here we are. Hmm. Point taken. Let's see. How do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. It was good to me. But he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. Do you know who was your father, then? I know who I was told was my father. He died even before my mother did, anyhow. It isn't important. Our Lehman eventually married a young woman from Morlay, which caused all sorts of problems between mm. him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumours which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. Of course they would. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Sounds like an awful thing to do to a child. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence, I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumours were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there, and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. You were he's like, you were young, dot dot dot. Hmm. Uh, how old is Alistair? You got to, I'm in twenties. Old Gehiris, now that's a question. No idea. This is what coming up with a character ahead of time would have been a good idea. Um, you were young. 
I'm... Mm, would Gahira say that? I mean, what? Well, he's a teen. Well, he was a young teenager. He was what, ten? Is what he was saying. Ten, eleven. Yeah, you were young. And raised by dogs, or I may as well have been the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Earl is a good man and well loved by the people. He also was King Kalen's uncle. So he has a personal motivation to see Logain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Hey, Alistair approves, and I'm guessing Codex updated his. Have you already read this one? You know one you know one good thing about the writer it brings people together. Oh, we have read that. Mother was a serving gale, serving gale, serving girl who died when Alistair was very young. He was raised by Eamon Guerin, Isle of Radcliffe for a time. The old's wife, Isolde, suspected the reason her husband took an interest in the welfare of a servant's child was that Alistair was Eamon's son. She insisted that the boy be sent away to the Chantry. Hmm. I think we might head to Redcliffe next. Because there's quite a few things that just seem to be going good. Redcliffe is important, so we might do that next. I don't know, just a... Uh... I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes Feed them a bari, the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Oi. Leave Chester alone. Don't listen to Alice, it's full of it. I'd never feed you another human being. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. Uh... Leave Chester alone. Yeah. So yes, uh, we're calling it that. We have a new companion who I may or may not use. I don't know. I think I'm probably going to do what I'm doing with Mass Effect, where I'm going to try and pick... Um, try and think of the kind of role-playing reason behind who I take. So, Shale might come to Orzammar, because I think Golems are somehow involved there. Memories, weird thing. Um, Alistair's definitely come with me to Redcliffe, but apart from that, shrug. Um, <laughs> yes, when we go to the Circle of Major, let's take Shale. I'm sure that will go down well. Um, that might be interesting seeing what happens because I've never had shell before, um, and because uh, the la uh, cause when I played before, I had Alistair, Liliana, and kind of and I think um, uh, the other mage you can get. It's one of those weird things with this kind with this game is I'm kind of trying to avoid giving people a load of spoilers, but so I'm going to be thinking about who I take rather than just fitting into. Um, as a kind of team around here. Um, these are the people. Yeah. So, I'll try and do that. I can't promise I'll do it, but I think it kind of makes sense that you're actually using everyone in your party rather than just a small select group. So, yep, next time I think we're going to be going to Redcliffe and, uh, yeah, getting all even side with us because I think we've passed it a few times heading to Honleith and around there um, and map yeah so we're currently there we went up to Sulkers Pass and then came down to Honleith I think it would make sense at this point to head up to Redcliffe um, get do the stuff there and then head on to maybe head to Soldier's Peak do that one then. I don't know. But um, that's next time. <laughs> that's some way away, if memory serves, um, wrapping up uh, Redcliffe and everything. So, um, yeah, that's next time. Going to Redcliffe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>